Hey everybody, this podcast is proudly sponsored by CardsReleased.com. CardsReleased.com has been supporting the game since Opus 1. Use promo code CHOCOBROS to save 10% off your next order. Hello, 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 and welcome to another episode of CHOCOBROS. I'm your host, Sam Snipe Prime. I'm Zach Burrell. And I'm Cody Snodgrass. And this week we're going to just dive into Opus 9 stuff, all the hype around it. We'll discuss the uh, public enemy number one, apparently, of uh, pre-full release, and uh, get Cody's thoughts on what um decks he's gonna play because all i can talk about is these complicated five color nonsense moogle decks and i know you've got some more grounded ideas i'm sure <laughs> so <laughs> let's uh, like that let's just start with the pre-release though so uh cody how was your pre-release experience um so i actually i missed the saturday morning pre-release um but they had one that i can make it was around four o'clock i showed up and only about three others showed up <laughs> So I actually just bought my pre-releases. They said we could buy as many as we want. I bought three and basically just went home and cracked them open. How much do they cost? Um, 35, I believe. Holy crap. Yeah, when I said we had 35 no matter what in St. Louis, I meant that. <laughs> uh, and ours is 30 with prize, prize support if you play and 25 if you get them just solo. No, yeah, I got one for 30 because I gave the store owner my sleeves out of one of them. I would have done that for all three of them. <laughs> Actually, oh, I would have kept one, I mean, one set, maybe. Yeah. I would have done that for any of them. The sleeves are selling for like 10. Are they really? Like, yeah, so the guy's just robbing you. Well, I, I told him that was fine. I didn't mind it. But, oh, okay. Uh, well, then you're gifted. Yes. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. But yeah, the $35 price tag, that is the St. Louis staple around here. So. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Oh, hey, you have an least... LQ now. You got to stop complaining. Right, yeah. <laughs> well. We'll see how that goes. No more complaints allowed. <laughs> yeah, now, if but you don't no, win yeah. that LQ, by the way, after all this time of asking for it. Oh, man. Well, hopefully I can win before that. <laughs> for, those, for those of you that are listening that don't know, Cody is the premier, the very first LQ winner in the history of the game. Oh, that is true. Are you? Yeah. Yeah, he is. Hmm. Yeah, I, I started the trend of take a photo with your LQ trophy. Is that not only take photos after tournaments? I mean, is that, is that not started a the trend of winning LQs too. I mean, I don't know, how far do you want oh. to go? Oh god! You're, yeah, you're first to cool. defeat in Swiss. <laughs> no, I think Carmo- I thought Carmona did that first. At LQs, at LQs. Oh god! Yeah, everybody. Did that. <laughs> You've even done that, Zach. <laughs> this is true. Still didn't qualify at that one. Anyway, moving on. Uh, <laughs> Sam, how did you feel about the pre-release? Uh, well, I guess you didn't. I didn't go. go to the pre-release pre-release, but I didn't go. I went the next day and bought some boxes. So I guess I'll talk about it. Uh, Olivia's broken in simplified sealed <laughs> because she just player off anything, and she's really hard to remove when there's not any removal. You can't draft removal. You just get what you get. So it was really awkward to try to handle her and some other cards. Um, yeah. It's a pretty sweet set, though. I will say that uh, we went to Sam's and drafted for release kits the following day. That was pretty enjoyable. Uh, how'd you feel about fun, the set yeah. after the first one, Mr. Fire Earth? <laughs> um, I feel like my deck was the best deck at the table, but it, and that's why I won. But it, like, I don't think it was the best deck that could have been built. I think people just need to practice drafting more. Um, when I saw what was going around, I quickly realized I could have made a better deck. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah. But I, I was there, there in too deep, so yeah. I don't know. The, the more people practice, the better they'll get. Um, but I mean, my deck was sweet. It was the headhunter deck. Um, headhunter with king and queen. Headhunter with king and queen. So yeah, like and lock yeah. with one target. Did you ever hit flip? It? I did. First time I played it, <laughs> <laughs> I flipped and hit shadow, and it was like I knew what I was doing the whole time. <laughs> yeah, Lord. I had a scion too. I just didn't play it. No, no reason. I, I have no explanation to why, other than like it just slipped my mind. And then like I, I'm practicing, and so like while most people would change their deck or whatever, like my practice is that once you submit your deck list, it has to stay the same. So I didn't change it. So. <laughs> Excellent. Yeah. I had a sign. I just didn't play it. Yeah, there's some cool synergies though in the set, like the Adele eight, the five drop nine K in water, synergizing with Cipher is cool because she's a witch mm-hmm. or he's a witch. I don't know what that card is. Uh, yeah. The Moogles are sick for draft as well. Uh, having just that color fixing made it really easy. Like, I opened my first pack. I think the first time around, I ended up with four Moogles by the end of it. So I just was yep. color fixed into Earth Lightning X. So Yeah, I had nice. four Moogles as well. Yeah. Ironically, I had four of the same Moogle. 
But I we were also four. on the far sides of the table from each other, so. Yeah, I had four lightning moogles at the end of it and two earth moogles. And then yep. I, I stopped taking them eventually because I'm like, I need other names in my deck. <laughs> right, yeah. <laughs> I would have liked one more earth so I could have at least three, but... Anyway, uh, so <laughs> how, how are we feeling about the set so far? What's everyone working with? So, Sam, do you want to talk about what you're working with? Do you want to keep it under? No, nah, nobody, nobody wants to talk what they're working with, right? Like, we're all trying to qualify for Worlds of Gen are we? Con. Are we, are we all well. trying to play for the <laughs> same uh, there it is. card here? <laughs> so, I mean, we'll just start I, off talking about I have four in, like, two of, like, seven of my decks. So, yeah, it's good, but it's not, like... I was going to say, how do you feel about broken. all the Facebook posts going around right now that are kind of doomsday ban gesper style posts about Porum. gesper was terrible for the game Porum is annoying there's like that's it like i don't know maybe i have to play against it more it has been annoying but it's also just been annoying it's like not a big deal to it's me it's a good know. value card like for sure yeah and like something that water probably didn't need but it was close like water hasn't gotten that many good tools lately mm -hmm. um so eventually you have to keep it updated you know like you can't just keep getting wind everything um <laughs> well you kind of gave yeah, them I mean, something I, though right like <laughs> getting your back your valfors and your diablos and yeah i mean like whatever else you want to play yeah i guess i guess i guess i stand corrected because like if this car was printed in lightning like it wouldn't nearly be as good but it'd be sweet right like it, right this card would be awesome in lightning but like might not even see play at all <laughs> So. I like this card with Phoenix, because you Phoenix are back, block, it dies, get back your Phoenix. Just a free free block, get some damage in. It's kind of cool. Yeah, there's a, there's a lot of cool stuff you can do with it, but, like, I think what people are missing, and, he, and here's the thing. Like, I built infinite, you know how I build, like, these janky decks like you do. <laughs> you build all these crazy decks. But at the end of the day, like, your opponent can just kill you. Like, you're like, okay, I'm going to pour them in a favorite pour them, and, and they're just like, yeah, I'm just going to keep attacking with my cloud. <laughs> and, like, you, I'll sack it, kill your other guy, attack again. Like, I don't know. It seems good. I'm not saying it's not good. I'm definitely not saying it's not good. I'm just saying that it's not... I don't think it's nearly as broken as people think. It's very good. Cody? Yeah, I haven't actually seen too much of it so far. Um, so, oh, I guess really I'm for it. making its ways around untap? No. No, it's oh. a lot of a lot of modifier and cadets that are just... Oh, perfect. That's exactly so, what I expected man, to see playing. Yeah, just, just what I really wanted to test Let's against. Say, un untap, I guess, is where you go if you need a self-esteem boost. Yeah, it's... Yeah. <laughs> but it's certainly a place. Now, no, I've seen I've seen a little bit of it. and Real question, though. How I, is the modifier doing on there? Oh, sorry. If you want to finish oh, horribly. Course. It's horrible. Oh, okay. It's modifier. Just bad. <laughs> it's not better at all. People are like, oh, yeah. Yeah, if, if Frida is not going to save you, so... No. Like, yeah, never was. It, it's just not. But Borm can get it back. So. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> <laughs> um, but no, I, I haven't had to deal with it too much. Um, I think I've only played against one deck with it. And then every now and again, I'll just kind of like watch a few matches, like join in and just spectate. Um, and I saw a little bit, but nothing too too wild. Yeah, but I've seen people. I see, I see the Facebook post today, and now I'm like. Yeah, you, <laughs> you messaged us like a half hour ago, like, what's up with all this yeah. forum talk? <laughs> yeah, I wasn't able to really check my phone today at work, and then as soon as I did, it's like 200 comment posts about forum Whoops. only. I'm like, oh. Yeah, getting back uh, fan fritz is pretty good. But... Yeah, it seems, seems pretty good. On the EX burst, I think, was a little bit too much. But... It's definitely good, and I've, I've always said I like card advantage from the break zone. Uh, even in a set with Miss Dragon printed, <laughs> I like getting cards back rather than having to always draw because Mill is a very relevant win con these days in terms of just the saturation of the water wind decks. Uh, <laughs> if, I mean, water decks being like going to deck out and stuff. So I like getting, especially in water, being able to get card advantage from the break zone rather than from drawing more cards is probably pretty good for them. I'm not going to say it's replacing Blade of Viking anytime soon, but having Lena Porum is pretty nice. Yeah, I mean, they, it's, it's like circular. Like, sometimes people think, like, Lady of the Viking is bad, then it's good, then it's bad, then it's good. It depends on, yeah, your meta, for sure. Now, no, we... it just depends on, it depends on who says what and who's following them. <laughs> I guess like, that's Lady true. Like, of the Viking has always been good. Like, it won't, Balfour's always been a card that kills them both, and it's still good. Fina kills them both, and they're still good. I mean, people who think Lady of the Viking are bad are just silly people. <laughs> 
And I was brewing a deck earlier that had, you know, Porum, Lena, that kind of thing. And it's not a lot of room for forwards in the deck. And I was sitting there wondering if I could manage to put Layla Viking in. And I, uh, I couldn't fit it yet, but I definitely feel bad not having it. So other, I would say, super hyped card would be Mist Dragon. Uh, I think at least I know Sam and I are pretty excited about that card. Cody, I know you made a kind of a troll post. Yeah. SOS, let's ban Mist Dragon, it's broken card, yeah. blah, 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 whatever. Uh, how, do you, yes. how do you really feel about it, though? No, I think it's, I think it's fine. <laughs> I think sarcasm is dead in the Facebook groups. Um, but <laughs> uh, <laughs> No, I like the card. Um, that's not stopping Mono Water, so I saw some people saying some stuff like that, but Mono Water isn't going anywhere anytime soon. So. Yeah. No. But no, I like Mist Dragon. I just love it because it's a vastly improved Carbuncle. Like, yeah, it's it's a playable Carbuncle. I, I don't know if it'd be playable if it just did that effect, but having the other options to break zones to blow people out and drawing a card for some reason uh, or saving your guy or whatever. Because that's the thing, too, is, yeah, you can't, like, counter Phoenix, but you can save your guy from dying to Phoenix or get rid of their break zone to get rid of their guy that would be coming back with Phoenix. So either way, the card works against most summons, even though it has the cost restriction, which is pretty cool. No, uh, I think I'm a big fan of that card. Uh, there's actually... I'm trying to think of everything else that I really like about the set. I'm yeah, a big fan of... To, yeah, talk about... Obviously, the, the ice cards I like uh, are Laguna and the uh, Azure Dragon. Mm -hmm. Is Laguna good? Yeah. Yeah. I like it much better than Ysail. Ysail is hard to fit with uh, the back row line being as tight as it is. Sure. Um, so Laguna kind of just slots right in pretty easily, especially in a high forward deck like Ice cutting, usually wants though? to go for. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that's that's my question. <laughs> that that we don't reveal. I'll, I'll talk about that after the podcast. Oh, sure, sure. <laughs> oh but no, there's there's, there's, that's fair. there's plenty of room right. to cut things though. Like I mean, you see a lot of lists with like three Sid Reigns, um, four Celeste. Like there's definitely room for things to fit in. I guess in the mono ice, yeah. The Ice Earth yeah. is a little tighter, and Ice Fire is not, I don't think, interested in that card. But. Yeah, Ice Earth, you don't play either one of these cards, I don't think. Mm -hmm. I'd be surprised if you didn't sleeve up three of the new Zolera, too. That Zolera seems pretty good. Well, I only own one at the moment, so. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> that's, the, that's a good that's reason not to run extras. Now, how do you feel about Vayne as an Ice player? And apparently NA players are soaking their pants over the card, according to some people. Well, I think the card's art looks great, um, but it's name <laughs> When you start off with that, that's like saying bless their heart or something like that, where you just know you're about oh, to shit on them. <laughs> I, no, I like the art. Uh, I think the card's good. Um, I think it'll take a little while for us to see, like, the most optimal build around it. Um, I'll leave that up to, like, the more control -y based players, somebody like Sam or, like, maybe even Kyle Peters. Um, definitely not a card that I can just immediately put in my ice deck. Mm -hmm. because the four drop is already like huge right now yeah for sure yeah um, i think you don't play this card without something like a stroller or cleo yeah you definitely want to keep it protected um i mean it might also it might also be good with like flans though like i think people underestimate like how good flans are like so that you just they actually just have to top deck the answer mm -hmm. so that could be something so it's kind of not like saying a, it's good but it could it's be a, something. it's a high high rolling sid alstein kind of <laughs> at that point Instead of Sid mm -hmm. you kill one thing, you just go discard your hand thing. Well, yeah, and if you like, if you just something like Ultimnesia, their backups or something, then it's super. That'd be brutal, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and then the Azure Dragon, I don't know the last part of it, but um, I like that card because it deal. it's an answer to certain cards that we never really had an answer to in Ice before mm -hmm. outside of Sid Alstein. So like if your opponent plays like just randomly like a, a four drop guy or a five drop yang currently in like the current ice builds you can't do anything except for swing over it mm -hmm. yeah with like a party attack or if you get like kuja or orphan big enough um but yeah that card gives us a quick out to that so it's nice that it's a answer to cards that aren't dull so like people would right. never attack yeah. their ishtola so you can't ever like emperor their ishtola or something but now you can just be like kill it and then do your other shenanigans right i like uh in ice i like lock a lot the new the new one i feel like a lot of the old versions of ice weren't even running the three drop 
Um, and like an ice backup, they can start you another ice backup. It's pretty sick. And in late game, it can search you like a forward, like whatever you need. It can go find a summon. If you're only like some people are only running like three Zalera's, so like you can know that you always get Zalera when you play lock. Um, and then you can obviously Kuja to break it and then like play another one later or something. I think that card's probably underestimated. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I haven't gotten a chance to play it. Obviously, I'm still playing lock and all my mono ice lists right now. So I wonder yeah. if there'll be decks in the future with like a very specific like monster they need or something or like you were saying one summon that lock is always going to name that type and just go find that card like if you need it early late whatever we yeah. will see kind of like the agrius decks where you build around having that kind of cascade effect mm -hmm. any other thoughts on the new cards besides ice cards cody uh i'm trying i'm looking through a few more of these i do like the moogles like you guys are saying uh it's unfortunate that fire didn't see any love in those um <laughs> i would have really like to see like maybe like a fire earth um but i'm pretty good i, I would have loved what... a fire that produces <laughs> lightning oh gilgamesh cannon yeah. <laughs> a fire that produces anything would have been nice um but fire fire water would have been like the one i want yeah fire water would be really good fire earth be up there as well fire yeah, and then, uh, would have been interesting a card I kind of forgot about, well, I didn't forget about it. It's just, it's been so long since I saw it, was the Yaismet. I don't know how you say that. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, the Dragon, dragon Boy. Oh, that card's super good. Um, uh, like, a lot of people, we used to always say with, uh, with like, Minerva, like, oh, it can just get Leviathan. But, like, nobody plays that card, so. Also, like, yeah, this gets an effect when it enters, sticking. not just when you one tap. Like, right. So Yeah, like, although the enter effect's something. only really good if it's uh, breaking a 5-drop. Right, like all the other ones kind of. No, that, that kind of, I think the, play another card. No, that kind of sucks because you're like, you could have just done that with Fina. Right. Well, I assume you're also playing Fina in your Yasmet deck. Well, no, but the point is, is that like, it's not like, it's nowhere near as good as what Fina can do. I guess she also uh, costs nine if you want to do both modes, so you can. Right, she can five K and untap and like right. clear like That's water right. boards, but like. Yasmin yeah, has to kill a five drop when it comes in, or survive a turn. To be good, in my opinion, because like you could play it, untap your stuff, um, but you paid nine, so eleven, including Yasmin. So like I don't know how many more cards you have left in your hand to, to play. <laughs> yeah, you you pitch two, play Yasmin, untap your five backups. Now you have yeah. So you had to have at least three cards just to do that, mm -hmm. and then you need a fourth card if you want to play anything. I'm not saying that Wind can't do that. Obviously, Wind gets. A lot of cards draws a lot of cards, um, and it, one of the packups. One of the problems is that it floods on backup play games. So maybe this is one way to kind of pay. But still, even if you're even if you're doing it, you still need something to do with all that CP. So unless you have Yuri on the board, I don't think it matters. Mm -hmm. That's fair. I don't know, and I don't. Yuri, Yuri I, I don't think that like it's the it, like it's good with Yuri, but like I said the same thing with like uh, was it the Lasso or Loso or whoever that attacks with Yuri. So, yeah. Yeah. And people are like, oh, it's really good with, with Yuri because you can like trigger it and stuff. And I would rather just have like a Zidane or another Aerith or another Stola to protect my Yuri over having another forward any day. Um, because like Yuri usually isn't attacking anyway. So like the decks you put Yuri in aren't trying to kill your opponent with damage. So like having a forward that deals double damage isn't even that effective. So. Like, like if, if they had, like, an Archangel, like, like Adele, for example, Wind already has Adele, which is unblockable. So they can already get into damage if you need to. So attacking with it into, like, a big guy, yeah, you'll get into damage, but your guy will die um, sometimes. I mean, it gets bigger, obviously, but point being, they can just chump block it if they need to. Um, uh, Wind has Adele, so it can already get into damage automatically. And it doesn't um, require your one of your biggest targets in your deck to get killed to be on the field still. Right, to even function. Yeah. yeah, it's just better by itself. Um, and then, you know, when you're not trying to deal damage, Yuri's just... Any other card's better than having a Luso on the field. Like, Ishtola, Zidane, Aerith. Um, having just a card in your hand to, like, <laughs> a counter spell, you know, whatever, so... Yeah, and then another win card that I really like uh, is the Mage's Sisters. I think that card's going to see a lot of play. Um, 
I didn't realize that the Purim shenanigans had already started today. Um, but outside of that, there's a card in Yu-Gi-Oh called Armageddon Knight that did the same thing, and I was a big fan of it then. Uh, it just sets up future like combo potential from like future sets. Yeah, there's a card in Magic called Entomb that does yeah, as I say, things. Yeah. I figured I figured there was a Magic card at least, uh, but yeah, yeah, yeah I, was... I, don't, I got I don't got the background on that stuff. So <laughs> I was playtesting against Zayim uh, just just before we started podcasting, and uh, he hit he hit I think two or three Mega Sisters to the break zone in a row for me, and I was like. Holy crap! This is good. Like just putting <laughs> cards in my break zones never felt so good until you get to search for whatever you want and put it in the break zone. Yeah. So that's pretty sick. And yeah, there's a lot of I, I've been seeing people talk about Archfiends with it. Obviously, that's going to be my direction I want to go with it. Maybe Janky sure. might not work, but it's kind of cool to be able to get your gold buzz really cheap early. Uh, also, just a title consideration is if you're playing four title with the Archfiends. Let's say you open with at least two, and one of them's, and you have a wind card or something. You pitch that to play Maga Sisters, put another one in the bin. Your go buys cost two on turn one, which is pretty sweet. Uh, it's probably not the best application, but you know, yeah, I, I, like, I like the fun ones. But... <laughs> um, wind card, while we're on the topic of wind, I really like too is Shemhazai. Uh, I think that's going to be cool with like in a control deck with Shantoto you can just bounce your own Shantoto after dulling it. So it actually, it's on curve as well if you're on five backups. And it has the tech of, you know, activate your forwards or uh, break a monster or something. Uh, it's another answer to Death Gaze, which is kind of nice, but um, being able to repeatedly Shantoto is kind of cool. I like, yeah. I like anything loopy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I kind of like it. Um, like the old the old way to do that was like in the, the water earth decks you could like bismarck your own shantoto mm -hmm. this card is probably better than bismarck in a lot of a, a lot of ways like the activate your forge part is like pretty devastating against ice mm -hmm. yeah, um, that's the thing is yeah it's a card that's not just doing that right card. yeah no it, it does seem pretty cool um but then you can't run the other one or you run out of space the one drop the one drop shimhazai yeah why would you want to because you gotta play chocobos man Oh, <laughs> okay. <That's, laughs> I mean, sure. <laughs> if that's where we're going with it, then yeah. yeah oh, uh, this is Gilgamesh go, go wrong deck. Let's see. Uh, Bygone's pretty cool. Or Bygon, Bagon, Bygon. With the board wipe guy, if he takes four care more, it's pretty cool. Are you talking about the Earth guy? Yeah, the Earth guy. If he takes three yeah. care or less, he takes nothing. Uh, if he takes four care more, you can sack him and 7k the board. Everybody write down the deck list real quick. Go, go, go. Oh, yeah, go ahead. <laughs> That's a lot of chocobos. Uh, what was I saying? Oh, um, yeah, it's, I saw a deck from JFB, actually, on FF decks that was fire, earth, like, board wipes, basically. It's really cool looking. Probably going to test that at some point. Yeah, that sounds cool. I liked uh, some of JFB's decks I've seen him play on the stream with the Earthwind ones. Um, yeah, he has an Earthwind one that... <laughs> they all seem a little bit weak to Miss Dragon, though. Yeah, so. did, like Gabranth searching Golbez in Earthwind is pretty sick. And then you go get, like, Porum and stuff. It, it was a really cool deck. My dog says hi. Newest member of the Choker Bros right there. <laughs> <laughs> it's one of the headhunters. Son <laughs> of four legs. Uh, let's see. Other cards that, like, I didn't see originally, but, like, now that I've seen them either in pre-release or just, like, had more time to stare at the set. Uh, Gar yeah. uh, another card um, that originally I saw a lot of people not talking about, but is absolutely absurd, is the New Gabranth. I think Oh, having... it's absolutely absurd. I... It's pretty darn good. <laughs> like, it, that g it gives Ice Earth another way to search Sephiroth if they want it. Instead of playing the Jesse backup, it gives so you can just search a flan pitch play. I give. I guess you can search Earthwind. Said Austin. Said Austin as well, or your it. orphan if you're playing it, or whatever. Yeah, the big haymakers that Ice has. Uh, if you're playing like an Earthwind, you can go find your Camel Knot instead of relying on the Star Civil every time. Uh, th there's just a lot of cool and. I mean, it's things good. Find with it. It's good. The way you said it made me think that you were saying this like. I guess. I, yeah, I on, on level with some of the other like 
Well, I guess the, the legends aren't even what are yeah, fading the legends out aren't even, No, they're not at all. <laughs> like, there's some really cool ones. Like, I, I love Fusoya and I love Radia. Cause I just Same, love but you can't play either of them in your freaking mill deck because they both draw you cards. No, you can't. <laughs> I, uh, they both draw you I do have a Fusoya Ridia deck, but that's, yeah, it's not a, it does not have Riku. <laughs> yeah. I actually don't know how I'm going to win with that deck. I just know that I'm not going to lose with it. <laughs> so I, I got to figure out that next step of. Sometimes not losing means that you win, and sometimes it also sometimes. means that you lose. I just need some monsters or something to kill people with. Because, yeah. G Gigas, man. That's, you can't go wrong with Gigas. That's basically where I'm going with it. <laughs> it's kind of find the cuts. Yeah. Now, are there any... you know, Cody's just going to play some boring ass ice deck. I was about to say, I'm like, is there anything other than ice element that you could see yourself playing this set? And besides, oh, wind... specifically wind water. Well, that's not very fair. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, are you're you going to try something up. new or are you just going to continue optimizing nope. good old faithfuls? I think it is almost already. I don't know. Uh, it's already optimized? I, I... Jeez. No, I wouldn't say that. There's not a whole lot to add. Like pour them to wind water. Right, that's what I'm As saying. You... So other than those, are you? Uh, I think yeah. I see people adding Lena too. I don't. I don't yeah. know if I. I don't know if I like that. I mean, imagine Valforing nine times a game. Yeah, I mean, imagine needing to Valfour nine times a game. Aren't you losing that game? <laughs> that's fair. <laughs> Maybe you're just milling them every turn because you can. Yeah, you probably just mill them out at that point. Yeah, you just because yeah. you can. Or Diablos multiple um, times against these greedy giant forward I'll decks i'll definitely play, be playing uh more of like the ff15 package uh with like regis coming out mm -hmm. i was pretty excited when that card got revealed you um, mean that you're like locals no well yeah, yeah. <laughs> i i said no before i even like listened to what you were saying <laughs> wait play and they're gonna ask me something that's not ice no <laughs> yeah yeah um but no and then ice earth i've been really fond of Pretty much this whole last format of Opus 8. Now, do you agree with the Brant for... inclusion? No. Okay. No. Not to be, like, rude to, like, what you were saying. Um, right. It could be could the be best rude. deck ever. But like... <laughs> Zach, you're an idiot. That's the dumbest thing I've ever heard in my life. <laughs> my my list no, but... is three now. Yeah, I've been playing a lot of Ice Earth. It started at Tampa, and I'm playing it this final week of Opus 8. And... Oh, nice. Definitely going to be playing it in Opus 9. Now, do you have any LQs coming up soon, or is it just uh, Wave 3? I have, I'll probably be attending Omaha on, like, the 28th, I believe it is. Oh, so oh, just before Gen Con, wow. Yeah, the weekend before Gen Con. Um, so, yeah, that'll be a quick five-hour drive up to Omaha. Hopefully, yeah, so... get my, hopefully get the qualification there. That way we can just... Have a blast. At I mean, that's, that's the meme. I don't know when you're gonna get qualified, but well, I mean, yeah. that, I mean, you can still have a blast at Gen Con. It's not like you're not getting Nats invites. So. Oh, I will. Yeah, <laughs> but like if I go like if I start off like one and four at Gen Con this time, it's gonna feel real bad if I don't have a call. <laughs> still playing Lightning again, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, never that. Yeah. Are you uh, are you guys excited for the Seal event? I don't have a ticket, so. Oof. I mean. Rip. Man, I, I decided to go to Gen Con like three months after you did. Oh, I know. Well, decided. Uh, do they still have them for sale? They shouldn't. They, they did a couple of days ago. They had two Same. tickets left last I knew, and that was two weeks ago. Or like, and did you ever look to see if they Did you ever look to see if they sold, or did you just assume they did? Uh, no, because you got your ticket, and I assumed they were gone. Because <laughs> you. Well, I, I can't buy two tickets. <laughs> And I, I was going to check it another yeah. day, and then I didn't. I'm going to laugh right now if he's looking at this. I'm like, going to oh, look, because you, you're saying it now. But, I mean, it's like, what, two weeks away? <laughs> There's no way. What? No, people people Have haven't, faith. like, added, decided to jump at Gen Con the last second. I'm, like, Although, that crazy person. The Someone did just post on Facebook. They just bought their tickets. Like, oh, all their events are sold out. It's like, well, first of all, you just bought your ticket. So what do you expect? Second of all, I think that's going to mean that I can't. That, hmm. that they're going to be sold out. Well, not all, the, not all the events are sold out, so. Just well, probably the, the two, the, maybe the two main the events. Two, yeah. the oh, did I you look? I am currently. But no, I'm uh, very, as far as seal, <laughs> I was say, I'm very bad at navigating the Gen Con site. But anyway, continue. Uh, as as far as sealed goes, I'm excited for it. Um, I had a good time last year. Unfortunately, I bubbled and didn't make top eight, but um, mostly because I misread my opponent's Yastola. <laughs> several, several times. Like I picked it up and read it like ten times. Yeah, they're sold out. Nice. Title is sold out too. 
I know there's a title slot. Unless oh, because you get the Rubon A2 thing. You do? Yeah. Ooh. Imagine being Zach and just never paying attention to anything. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, the cool I'm thing a... about Zach is he finds out everything so fresh. You know, like he's like, <laughs> like you almost envy him because everything's always so <laughs> new to Zach. Wait, you get the title? You get Rubon for title? It's like he, you get to relive that excitement. Unfortunately, he's reliving it after it's already sold out every time. Yeah, I bought entry to every event in Gen Con because. Did you did you get into the, the Shattered Labyrinth event? Okay, that I did not. I don't know what that is. What about the Talisman of Kingdom Hearts? Okay. You said Final Fantasy, didn't you? Or you just no, I meant like every event. Yeah, every single event. Did you get the info? Chocobo party up. I am playing the Game of Thrones trading card game. No. Uh... Oh, so I heard the Chocobo party up thing had like some sweet pricing too. One of them sold out. Does it come with the Zidane? No, I think that's just Gen Con. Okay. Uh, the, not just, I think it's just the world, World's events. Yeah, this sealed set is kind of interesting. There's not a whole lot of removal that I've noticed. Um, no, there's not. And yeah. Where the removal is, it seems like it's like a lot of heroes. So, Just play King and Queen. It'll be good. But, but Sam, those cards are bad, and they're in fire, so they are unplayable. I like King and Queen, but you already know that. I know. I also defend them as well. I'm just. Yeah, I mean the fact that they're in fire makes them a lot worse. But. <laughs> I mean, what would, uh, other other ones would be kind of broken? So if they're in water, they would what reduce by five, which is just way better. Uh, there's and it'd be another and they way could for attack. water to get two things. And and they could attack things. and they could attack. Yeah. If they're in lightning, they would reduce and then they would have haste. They would have haste if your opponent <laughs> has like two or more forwards or if yeah. controls more than you. When they'd be if they party attack, they're unblockable. Uh, no, it'd be like if they party attack, untap all your backups. <laughs> <laughs> Seems fair. Earth, get back a copy of, or get back a forward when they party attack. <laughs> get back a prince or princess. Something this is there. exactly why they put them in fire. That'd be safe. <laughs> anyway, I think that's about all, right? <laughs> I think we beat that topic. The most. I'm so glad we had to spend years on forum. I was dreading it. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I just it's a sweet card. I'm going to enjoy playing it a lot. And yeah, even in decks that don't play water but can make water CP. <laughs> or it can just Phoenix it back. Or can Phoenix it back, yeah, exactly. Or Star Sibyl in the Porum. <laughs> Wait, I, I do have one more card I wanted to ask you guys about, uh, just because it's more of more of your guys' expertise, and that's, uh, is it Larkesis? Is that how you say it? It's a good card. Yeah. The monster guy? It's yeah, a good what, do you guys, what do you guys think about that? Uh, it's good probably gonna brew a deck at some point with it i just haven't yet yeah haven't gotten around to it there's like a hierarchy has, of decks has, i'm brewing and i'm trying it has to the word monster on it twice it's good yeah right <laughs> and and the word search somewhere in there and this word break zone and for the break zone i mean this card's just good just good. and it can be full art yeah it's <laughs> pretty dope yeah did yeah. you guys pull any full arts from your pre-release kits i got a lilty I got three uh, full art Mist Dragons, but not from my pre-release kit. Anyway. Oh. Okay. <laughs> I thought you were wealthy for a second. <laughs> yeah, no, uh, no, no. One of our I, guys in our draft pod got a full, uh, full art Mist Dragon as well, though. That's, that's true, cool. yeah. Because I, I the same pack, I opened my Lilty. I'm like, ooh. And he, he just gets this shit-eating grin on his face. I'm like, what? Flips around the Mist Dragon. I'm like, come on. <laughs> <laughs> Seems yep. pretty good. Yeah, yeah no, I'm, about... I'm pretty excited for the set. Um, I'm glad some people are changing their attitude a little bit instead of just saying the set is garbage and uh, why can't we get another Opus 5 or 6 or whatever people were saying was the last good set, they think. So Yeah, we went from that to ban Porum really quick. Yeah, right. <laughs> like, <laughs> and Porum like was real out quick, that whole time. Right? Yeah. <laughs> well, because people are actually playtesting now, I guess. But Yeah. I mean, it's, it's a good card. I don't... I don't think it's ban worthy, but I think it will definitely warp the meta. All right, well, let's stop beating that dead horse. Yeah, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> but guys, on. one more thought about Port. No, I'm just kidding. All right, we're good. <laughs> Anything else we got to discuss, guys? No. Nope. All right. Well, Farm's good. <laughs> we've been the Choker Bros. I'm Cody Snodgrass. And I'm Sam Snipe Prime. And I'm Zach Perel. And we'll see you next time. Porum. Porum.
Dun, 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 dun. Hey, everybody. Thanks for taking the time to listen to the Chuckle Bros podcast. Be sure to drop us a like and comment on our Facebook page or subscribe and comment on the YouTube page. If you have any comments and suggestions, especially about Cody's awesome hair, feel free to drop us a DM. And of course, don't forget to check out CosmoEvilies.com and use promo code Chocobros to get 10% off your next order.